Thank you. Well, I hate to uh, stop you in mid-flow, but we yes. do uh, need some questions, or we need to leave time for questions. Now, there are a couple of people who would like to make statements, but I'm going to have questions first, and then if we have time, I'll ask uh, one or two people to come to the mic. Uh, so, working press first, which is the table in front of me. If anybody has a question, could you uh, indicate, please? <coughs> Hi. Um, is that on? Um, Andy Sharp for the Nikkei Asian Review. Um, two questions. When was the last time you were in Burma and what kind of reception did you get there? And secondly, which is a bigger question, of course, it's um, what kind of international pressure would it take to persuade the Burmese military, the Aung Suu Kyi government to stop this genocide and try to put things right? Um, maybe thirdly as well, if, if you don't mind, sorry to ask another question, but what about all the Rohingya now in, in Bangladesh? Do they have any hope of coming home or do you expect them to build new lives for themselves in Bangladesh? I'm uh, sorry, the last question please. I just like sorry, do you expect the Rohingya in Bangladesh now to stay there and build their own new lives there? Okay, okay the first question, um, I was in Burma uh, two th in 2005, 2006, when I ended my exile in the US as a political refugee and pick up my uh, Burmese citizenship. Uh, I was there as a guest of the state. And, and these are my hosts. Uh, the, the one on my right is currently vice president who chaired the internal inquiry commission that exonerated the Burmese armed forces of um, you know, any wrongdoing. And then the tall man, is now uh, number three in the Burmese army. He's my contemporary. Uh, uh, he is the um, chief of general staff. He is a shoe in for number one position. He's uh, about 56 years old. Um, so the, uh, I was an activist for 15 years. I supported Aung San Suu Kyi as a grassroots activist. I was leading the consumer boycott in the United States as a student activist. And then when I, when I decided that Aung San Suu Kyi showed absolutely no leadership, yeah, something that I have been uh, indicated fully. She has shown absolutely no leadership, N moral, political, intellectual, strategic. The Aung San Suu Kyi, from a, le a leadership perspective, is a total catastrophe. Uh, so when I uh, reached a conclusion as early as 2004, uh, the Korean National Union uh, leader, General Bumya, and myself, we were looking for American support. I was author, uh, asked by the, um, the KNU and the Allied Armed Ethnic Organization that's along the Burmese uh, Thai border to look for basically arms and other support from the United States and other countries. And when I discovered that Washington wasn't serious about democracy when it barked a democracy. So I felt uh, that we were approached at the same time by the Burmese military intelligence at the time, General Kenyon, to work with us, uh, to work with them, because they said we are afraid of China. We don't want to be pushed into China's pocket. And so out of these three factors, the military is the overture to the overseas dissidents, and, and, and uh, my own personal conclusion that Suu Kyi is utterly uh, failed, and then thirdly, uh, the, um, uh, the, there, there are no alternatives to do like arm rise, uprising, and so, I decided to went back to Burma, attempting to work with the uh, Burmese military leadership. I was engaged in what is known as Track 2, setting up meetings with the uh, Burmese uh, military representatives and international labor organization, British government, French corporations, German foundations in, in Europe. And so I was their boy the, yeah, in Europe. But w and and I, w I had my own agenda. I allowed them to use me, and I wanted them to move on the reform platform as they say they would. So I propose that they reconcile with the student leadership if they don't want to deal with Suchi. And then uh, I ask them to invite the Burmese economists from abroad home to advise them on economic reform. And then thirdly, I said, can you make the internet available uh, for the Burmese? At the time, like internet was like a $200 per SIM card. Yeah, and uh, say, look, we are under, we are destroying our new generation, and others around Asia are uh, having access to uh, high-speed internet and, and learning about the world. And then they did nothing. And, and on top of that, they started shooting monks, and I cut my tie, and then um, I became an uh, enemy of the state. And so uh, in terms of the pressure, I think there has to be some kind of international intervention. I don't mean that uh, Japan sent its defense force and bombed the Nepi doll, or like uh, kidnapped me online from uh, wherever. 
And that's not what I mean. There are different types of intervention. If anyone who has uh, involved in any type of uh, uh, diplomacy and strategizing to deal with these issues, there are so many forms of in, uh, intervention. What, say, for instance, Japan can like simply say that we are going to have uh, a policy review in the face of a relentless call for uh, ICC referral and, and in the face of the, the, the impossibility of the... Um, uh, the Security Council. Essentially, for all intents and purposes, Security Council is in a in a coma. It cannot. It has not shown any capacity to address any large scale uh, sufferings, whether in Yemen, Syria, or Iraq or Afghanistan, and now in genocide in Burma. So, in that case, the individual nations that have signed the Genocide Convention, that have signed on to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they need to f call a uh, uh, emergency meeting somewhere, like the Tokyo summit, you know, Kuala Lumpur summit. Recently at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, Mahathir, uh, you know, Dr. Mahathir, the second, uh, the, the, the reformist prime minister now, I understand like he was an autocrat before, but at the age of like 94, the, Mahathir has been extremely, you know, progressive, I must say. He's even the, the head of state saying that maybe, you know, we will need military action. This is Mahathir, not a leftist, like a radical activist, yeah? We need to take Mahathir's word seriously. If we are not prepared to go all the way as Mahathir suggested, at least, you know, Japan should say, look, you know, we founded your armed forces, and now you are behaving like uh, the fascists in the 1930s and 40s, and uh, we cannot allow that to happen. Therefore, we will cut all, or like, we will put a moratorium, moratorium on like a foreign investment, moratorium on the development aid. Uh, you know, there, will, there should be no aid going to Burma except emergency relief aid and uh, medicine and humanitarian assistance. That's one country alone can do a lot. There are about, you know, uh, I can put together 12 different names of governments that will be prepared to follow Japan's lead. If Japan comes, Japan is the 10th largest investor in Burma. Yeah? Japan must not be, you know, seen or be recorded again in history as a war crime collaborator. Thank you. And there was another question. Uh, the Rohingya in, in Bangladesh. I'm oh, sorry. Think? Yeah. The, the, should, should they go back? Or yes. Can they go back? Can they go back? Can the can can the uh, can the uh, can the Jews who survived uh, you know uh, the twenty plus uh, uh, forced and death camps uh, should they go back or should they go to the Middle East and uh, the West should help them uh, uh, find uh, um, you know the uh, um, is Israel? I mean that's the same question. Well, I mean. Uh, ask yourself, like you know, if your fam, if you saw your your wife raped and uh, your father, uh, you know, shot dead in front of your eyes, uh, just only a year ago, and or you know, if if your little uh, six months old boy was burned alive in front of your eyes while your wife was raped and her breast cut off after the gang rape. Would you like to be told that, you know, like uh, you need to go back and that the Burmese, that this is like, you know, telling the uh, Holocaust survivors, you know, like uh, Auschwitz is, is uh, you know, uh, has a new paint, <laughs> go back, you know? I mean, this is utterly pathetic and disgusting coming from diplomats and policy advisors and world leaders, go back. It's like no one would tell the Jews and Romers and others who survived, uh, uh, the, the, the guest chambers and, you know, uh, 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 the labor camps. Would you like to go back to, uh, to Germany? I mean, look at the population of Jewish uh, people in Germany today. Compare that in 1930s and 40s. Where are the Jews today? Where are the people who survived the uh, Holocaust? Where are them? I mean, where are they majority? They're outside Germany. Yeah, what's so wrong with like a Rohingya needing international protection? Rohingyas are not demanding that they want an independence, independent republic of like is you know Muslim Rohingyas. They said we want to live with you, but we are in a situation where all pillars of Burmese society, the generals, the monks, the Suchi, the intellectuals, the public, the farmers, fishermen, and rickshaw drivers and street vendors don't want uh, don't want us there. They don't even consider us uh, but a part of them. And we have harbored no hatred towards you. And we are only like, you know, one million plus Muslims. We don't pose any threat. You are 50 million Buddhists. Yeah. 
And so like, you know, this is like, I mean, blatant. This is going to go down in history. And everyone's going to remember what happened in, in these years. And many of, many of the Japanese corporations and Japanese politicians will find themselves again in the bad spot of history. Thank you.